fell, out, fell out. I was back in the high school hearing the beating on the walls and so forth that was happening back here. But uh, I don't know about you, but my juices are kind of flowing right now because of all the different things I've heard today. And it's really, I don't know what the, uh, I think the, the uh, people who put this together have done a nice job. And I think you have got people thinking and dialoguing. And, and I know my mind is flowing about different things. Uh, my background has been in education. It's now my 38th year in education and mostly the high school principal. I was raised on a pig farm in Mercer County, right there by Grand Lake St. Mary's. It's been polluted by all the stuff going into it and so forth. My dad was a ROAG teacher, went to Ohio State University. Um, and so I can see a, a lot of the local, buying local, and also I understand you know, the conventional farming and, and all the things that go in with that. Um, with our school system, being a principal and you're always on cafeteria duty and you're always watching what's going on, you see, see what's happening and so forth. You know, the lunchroom has been very, was one of my things that kind of my pet peeve that, you know, that we needed to look at to improve. Three years ago, we had, was asked by our government to do a wellness policy, which is a good idea for schools. And within that wellness policy, um, our parents and teachers and there were some students involved said, you know, we developed a really good policy, and we had a lot of things going, but then when we looked at our cafeteria, we thought, hmm, it doesn't follow the wellness policy at all. It really doesn't. And so at that time, uh, Granville Schools was, was outsourcing our food system to Newark City Schools. Newark City Schools did all the cooking for us and brought the food in, or in a lot of cases, they heated the food and so forth and, and in, in our kitchens. And we had about 22% of our kids eating in our cafeteria, 22%. So our wellness committee said we need to make a change. And again, interesting to hear the speakers this morning, one of the things that the speaker said, you know, was talking about the uh, ideas, you know, you, you got to do it. <laughs> you just have to make changes. And I've always been that way in my, in my career. You make changes for the better. So we went and we developed some goals. What are our three goals for our, for our, our kitchen? for our food lunch program. One, and it based around taste. You know, the Angus, the uh, certified branding of Angus, that, that's bottom line. Why aren't our kids eating there? The food was terrible. It looked terrible. It was served terrible. It was plain terrible, <laughs> you know? And again, I'm not knocking Newark City because they did exactly what we wanted them to. It was, you know, we didn't ask them to do anything different. And so we, we basic, basically on values and taste. We wanted, to, we wanted to provide our students with fresh, cooked meals. We didn't want to have processed meals. We didn't want to have items that were, were thawed and, and, and frozen and, 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 and served. We didn't want to bring in all the pizzas from all the local vendors and serve every day. We didn't want to have French fries every day. We wanted to have local. We wanted to have fresh food produced in our kitchens. We want to have nutritious foods. And again, we get into a lot of arguments about what really is nutrition. We get into the hormones, we get into the, you know, the organic and non-organic and so forth. But bottom line is we wanted taste and we wanted to have good nutritious local food if we could buy it. And so we did that. We went out and we again went to outsource and I will talk about challenges in schools and one of my challenges I believe schools should get out of the food service business. I really do believe that and I'll talk about that just a little bit later. So we outsourced to AVI Foods, which again I'm not selling for AVI, I work for Granville City. But AVI matched what we wanted because they were doing it at Kenyon College. If you read several years ago, Kenyon College was, was doing those things. And so AVI came in, they brought an executive chef in our school has an executive chef who has been trained in serving and cooking. And he has a sous chef. And he has staff members who have been trained in how to handle food and deal with those. And so when you come into our kitchen and you come into our food, uh, our lunchroom, you're going to see people cooking. We actually have, you know, when we serve turkey, and we serve turkey several times a month, it's like your Thanksgiving turkey. It's real turkey that's, that has been cooked by turkey breast, and we have fresh mashed potatoes, and we have gravy, and we have fresh broccoli and green beans, and we have all the other items that you'd have with that. When we have meatloaf, it's individualized meatloaf that's so made by hand by our cooks. And we have, again, the fresh potatoes and so forth that goes with that. We are now serving 70% of our kids. We went from 22% to 70% of our kids. 
So I think we have some success. The first day we had our program last year, Chef Greg, he's about this high, great guy, and he said, and I'm sitting there, I, mean, I got tears in my eyes basically watching our kids eat. And I, I come out and I look at them and he says, Chuck, they're taking far too many vegetables. <laughs> I said, isn't that a heck of a problem? Because <laughs> every day we have fresh vegetable bars. So when the kids get their meals, and we just don't serve, you know, the, the meat, loaves, and turkey, but we also have homemade pizza. We make our own pizza. We have salads for them. We have homemade soups. We have salads that uh, we have a, a like a sub summary uh, sub bar, which they can tell the people what they put on in, on their subs or on their wraps. And they have a, a vegetable bar that they can go in and just pile the vegetables on all they want. We also do macaroni, macaroni salad, and we do cucumber salads, we do tomato salads, we do broccoli salads there. there. Our cooks are getting more, you know, they're, they're, they're seeing what the kids will eat. And he was complaining because he was taking too much food. I also, another good story about our success, I'm sitting here, and I, usually, I eat there every day. Didn't used to eat there, I'm telling you right now. I always brought my lunch, and my kids did too. So, I, so I'm sitting there, and I'm eating, I usually eat with the maintenance people. I'm over in all, you know, all the different areas. And I eat, I eat with the maintenance people because they eat there, and we talk about things that need to happen. And I noticed two of the grounds people, they were taking their broccoli, and they were taking it to the microwave and nuking their broccoli. So I'm thinking, well, maybe it's not, I'm, I'm eating the same broccoli, and I'm thinking, well, maybe there's one, you know, it's cold or whatever. So after about two days, I said, you know, James, I said, what's wrong with your broccoli? He said, it's not done, it's too crisp. They're used to soggy, overcooked broccoli, you know. And so this is what we're doing in our, in our program, and it's working. <laughs> it's working. Now, you might be sitting here, if you know anything about Granville, I'm going to tell you right now, Granville is not the typical public school. I came from Sheridan. I spent six years as high school principal at Sheridan, Perry County. I came from Zanesville before then, and I firmly believe that every school district can do this. Now, there are challenges. Um, buying local, again, buying local is our goal, but we know we can't buy everything local. But we're doing a lot of our local. We're getting, you know, veggies from Bird's Haven Farm. We're getting apples from Lynn's over here at Pataskala. I drive up to an Amish uh, guy right, right next door to Yoder's, by the way, we were just talking about, Wayne Miller. I found him on the internet of all places, find an Amish guy. And he had, last year, he had 2,500 pounds of potatoes that he was trying to get rid of at 40 cents a pound. I went to Chef Greg. He said, can we use these potatoes? He said, yes, we can. I got a van, got a maintenance person. We went up and got the potatoes. So now we made a deal with him. He's making potatoes for, doing potatoes for us this year. Our kids are getting organic, fresh potatoes. I mean, when we have mashed potatoes, they aren't powdered. They aren't, they're dead right there and aren't with their skins on. And our kids are loving every minute of it. So, you know, the challenge is, of course, finding that food. And we have to reach out. And that's listening to all these things here gets my juices flowing because I'm thinking, okay, now we can get some beans here from this group here and we can maybe get in with this uh, green bean, you know, co-op and see if we can't find some places there. Schools, you know, I've been in education for 38 years. I think we do a good job, but there's some things we do a poor job on. We don't work together. <laughs> You know what I mean? Schools don't really work together. We kind of like you guys talk about silos. Well, why don't schools get lunchrooms together and start buying cooperatively? Businesses do that, right? Restaurants do that. Why can't we do that? So that's going to be one of my goals to try to get that going to overcome that challenge. Transportation, buying local. Another huge problem, and again, this might not be a, you know, I'm a person who kind of tells it as it is, and, and it's not always a popular way. And of course, with what's happening at the State House now, very, you know, schools are kind of jittery. In fact, I was late this morning because the superintendent said, hey, we've got to talk about budget this morning and so forth, so we did. But one of the things, the problem with schools is we aren't spending much money on food. We really don't spend much money on food. We spend far more money on staff than we do food. Probably your lunch, your lunches that are made by your schools cost food-wise just over a dollar a plate. Now, what can you produce for a dollar? What can you really actually do for a dollar? <laughs> and you're selling it for two and a quarter, 250. We sell ours for 
the high school level, 285, and the intermediate or the elementary for 260. Which, by the way, when we was at Newark, it was 275. So we raised it 10 cents last year. But one of the problems with schools is that we are paying staff members, and again, I'm not prob don't have a problem paying staff, but we're paying staff members more than what the Granville Inn, which is one of the top restaurants in Granville, is paying their people. Shouldn't our dishwasher being paid the same as the dishwasher at the Granville Inn? Shouldn't our servers being paid the same as the servers as the Granville Inn? And our chef should be paid the same. Our chef gets about fifty-five, fifty-seven thousand dollars a year, and he deserves every minute, of, every every cent. Probably far more than what most people are paying their paying their lunchroom people in that situation. So I've talked to a lot of schools. You know, we made headlines at Dispatch. We didn't ask for that, but somehow they got a hold of this big story, big story, big color picture, right front page. So schools have been calling us. It's been another interesting situation. You can tell when they've been forced to call us. <laughs> you know, the food people. <laughs> And you can tell when they really want to know, you know. I got a call from a lady from a local school district, suburb school, and she said, Chuck, I'm supposed to call you. And I said, I knew right away what it was going to be like. And she said, you know, tell me, you know, I'm sure you don't pay, you just pay minimum wage. No, we don't pay minimum wage. We pay $9, 10 an hour for those, those workers that we have. And we have far better workers, by the way, than we did last year. They are very dedicated and trained in what they're doing. And so... I said, no, that's not true. She said, well, you had to buy a whole bunch of equipment. No, that's not true. She said, well, I was selling all my equipment. She actually told me that. I said, what are you having for sale? Because I like to buy some used them. <laughs> you know? And so that's a, that's a huge problem. Schools need to look at that because we're spending far more money on staff than we are on food. Another positive. You know, we're always out asking for levies, right? We're always out asking for money. Buying local certainly helps that situation. You know, we have great publicity. And we have a lot of people who know Tory Todd, who we buy our beef from. Tory Todd graduated from Granville. His dad taught physics at Granville. His beef's located right on Route 37. I can go there and wave to the little ones that I'm going to be eating next year. You know? They love us buying 8,000 pounds of beef from Tory Todd. They know Lynn's Fruit Farm. They know Bird's Haven vegetables. They're at the Granville Market. Last year, we sold 65,000 chocolate chip cookies. We bought them all from Gordon Foods. Now, you can imagine the chemicals that was in those, in those cookies. So I went to my local baker, the Granville Village Baker. I said, can you make some chocolate chip, chip cookies for us, like 65,000? <laughs> of course, she liked that because <laughs> that's income, you know? And our kids like Local village baker cookies. Now, here's another thing schools got to watch out is the price. Again, I believe in farmers shouldn't have to cut prices for us. We're paying Toy Todd three thirty a pound for his beef. Now, again, a probably poor businessman. I didn't go out and you know see if I could get them cheaper somewhere else. But I thought, well, Toy Todd, that's going to be a great thing for us. I was paying Gordon Foods a dollar eighty three a pound. So there's a profit there. There's a price there difference. I was paying Gordon Foods 13 cents a cookie, times 65,000. I'm paying a village baker 24 cents a cookie. We were paying, selling them for 35 cents, highway robbery, 35 cents for a cookie. But these kids bought 65,000 of them. You know, so I lost profit on those cookies. So Chef Greg and I sat down last year and said, okay, if we buy vegetables from Bird's Haven or whoever else, what's our top price we can get? What's a fair price? We're going to buy beef from Toy Todd or Flying J. Anybody know Flying J? He's got organic beef. He wanted to sell his for $4. I was going to buy 1,000 pounds from him for $4. Wouldn't go tell Toy, though. Anyway, but, the, <laughs> but the, the whole situation was, how much does it cost us more to buy local? It came out to about $25,000. Now, here's another thing you don't realize. How much do you think our budget is for this food program? We've got 2,500 kids. Now, I don't have the, the things out there so you can't cheat like you did the professor here. <laughs> so how much do you think our food budget is? How much is not food, but our whole cafeteria budget? That includes staff. That includes pots and pans. That includes napkins. It's got to be self-supporting. And your schools, by the way, have to be self-supporting. 
Who wants to take a guess how much we're spending this year at Granville for food or for the whole program? Take it. Two million, not that high. 1.5, not quite that. $850,000. $850,000, which is still a lot of money. And we're not that big of a district. So there's a lot of money to be had in our school system food wise. That wherever he knows where that Gordon Foods beef was coming from. You know what I'm saying? And now we're getting it local and we're keeping as much as we can in our local pockets. And another good thing is when we went and we said, you know, we are sure our people weren't back in the high school again, but I'm sure our people were not, you know, as far as pay is concerned, our people we hired. You know who ended up taking a lot of those jobs? Mothers who were bored at home and came in. It was part-time jobs. A couple guys who needed golf money who were grandparents who needed part-time jobs. They're great workers. They're great workers. Before we had at the uh, intermediate building last uh, the year Newark was there, because again, again, I'm not against unions, but in this situation it was, is bumping in unions. So they had two openings our intermediate building. Two bus drivers bumped into that. And they were serving our f food to our to our kids. Again, not against the bus drivers, and they were nice guys. But you can imagine how they put those potatoes on there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It wasn't a good situation. It wasn't a good situation. One last thing also we did, which I think is very important. You know, we were serving, it's hard to eat a chicken breast with a, with a uh, plastic fork. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to eat with plastic. And, it's, and literally, we were serving lumps of potatoes that weren't real potatoes, and they were put into a cardboard french fry, you know what I'm saying, boat, and that's what they were putting those things in. So we went out and spent the money to, to uh, buy the plates and silverware and stuff that we could we'd wash. And we have a dishwasher who does a great job for us in all the buildings. And our kids really appreciate that. They really do appreciate it. It makes a big difference. Money-wise, last year we lost $23,000. When I was showing this to the school board, the first, when we presented it to the school board, the person said, and looked me right in the eye, he said, Chuck, are we going to be able to do this financially? My legs started shaking. <laughs> and I said, yes, we will. Well, at the end of two and a half months, we were in the hole $48,000. And I went home to my wife and said, we're in trouble. <laughs> you know? But again, we're a startup business. We had no kitchen before, right? So we had to bring people in and train them. I didn't want kids standing along the line, so we brought extra staff in. And plus, we had no history about how much food to cook. So after those two and a half months, we was in 48,000, but we then had six months in the black and got it down to 23 or $25,000. This year, we're streaming right along. We're making money. We're making money. So it's been a good thing for our schools. It's great publicity. It's great for local. Um, and we're looking to buy products. So if you've got sausage to sell us, if you've got beans to sell us, if you have chips, I heard they're making chips now. We sell a lot of chips. You know, that's what we're all about. And every school, I firmly believe this, every school district can do it to some extent and needs to do it. They really need to do it, in my opinion. Thank you.